noise before the King, the Lord. All things to the Lord are new songs, for God has done marvelous things. For our opening hymn, please join me, come to Christ and join the King, in 158.
invite you to turn to each other and share the peace and love of Christ as they do together. May God's peace be with you.
love me, I must remain in that love. This means that you'll always be grateful and joyful and go on with your day. Always remember that you're not alone. You are loved by God. There are times that you may feel lonely or hurt or sad, sad, or you may feel like I am loved by God. Everybody repeat after me. I am loved by God. So when you say that, that is a prayer too. It can be a prayer. When you wake up in the morning and you're rushed to go to school, say, thank you, Lord. I am loved by you. And thank you, Jesus. Amen? So now you will stand and let's pray before you go to Sunday school. Holy Precious and loving God, I'm so grateful for each and every time we stand before the congregation and in the presence of the Spirit who is with us, to remind them, no matter what's come before them, or whatever that happening that they have seen and experienced in this world, to always remember the love of God through your Son, Jesus Christ. Allow them, O oh God, to feel your presence, and may you embrace them with your peace, joy, hope, and love. In Jesus' name we pray.
Africa and Europe and the Philippines, they gathered together to uh, have a holy conference making decisions for the future of our church. Um, as you all know that uh, there's so many things that uh, they're happening in our church, uh, especially of um, some of the petitions that we wanted to be more inclusive as a church. So uh, in 1984, the General Conference, uh, which is the common body, body of the United Methodist Church, uh, added this, uh, um, uh, a, added a, prohibition, a, a, a petition or a rules in our Book of Discipline uh, saying that homosexuality is in compliance with Christian teaching. So as of this conference, the church removed that um, paragraph, which is a paragraph 304.3, uh, that was said, while persons set apart by the church for all daily ministry are subject to all uh, human, is all subject to the requirement uh, and the highest standard of uh, uh, teaching and preaching the word of God, and while they're required to maintain the highest standard of holy living in the world. The practice of homosexuality is incompatible with Christian teaching. Therefore, self-avowed practicing homosexual are not to be certified as candidates, ordained as minister, or appointed to serve in the United Methodist Church. That's what Said on our in our book of discipline, and of this conference, uh, they voted with 93 percent of the seated delegates voted to remove that paragraph uh, that says self avowed practicing homosexuality clergy uh, is incompatible with Christian teaching. So that line or that sentence from that paragraph removed and allowed uh, LGBTQ to uh, discern their call and be uh, go through the process and be able to become a to become a, a, a ordained minister. Uh, another one that was uh, passed at the journal conference that uh, given the opportunity to the deaconess to serve communion and baptism uh, without the presence of the elders. There is another petition that passed uh, called regional, reg, regionalization, which means that Africa and Europe and the Philippines are three regions and the United States as a whole, which is another region. And because there are some rules that um, apply to us here in the United States, for example, allowing LGBTQ to be ordained, which <coughs> is already legalized here in the United States um, for a man to marry a man. But in Africa, they not. So with that, allowed and passed in our general conference, only the United States will be able to um, abide with that rules of allowing the LGBTQ to be ordained. In Africa, regionalization allows them to uh, adapt to their um, context and uh, their um, uh, rules. So they are not able to ordain LGBTQ. So regionalization will kind of help with each region to continue their serving and mission and ministry according to their uh, context of ministry. And there are many other 
holy conferencing with all those um, delegates who come from all different races outside of the United States and within the United States. There were 862 delegates who, who, um, who served and vote and make decisions. But when all that were passed in the general conference, some of those legislation will bring back to our annual conference and we have to talk about it and of course we have to pass it before we finalize and have it on our vote of discipline. But uh, I will have this in writing. There are many other positions and there are other changes in our church, but uh, what I wanted to share with you how diverse our uh, United Methodist Church with all different regions all came together and pray and worship and also discern um, and make decisions for the future of the church. But we're always mindful that we are all here as um, Jesus called his disciples that our mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. It has been a busy, long two weeks of conference. I have been a part of the COSRO, which is the general commission of the status and role of women as a monitor. But I get to sit in the small legislative committee and monitors for inclusiveness to make sure because there are some of the delegates who are not able to speak English, so they have to be translated and it's able to give them a chance to speak even though they have to Translated. So I was part of the monitoring committee that we monitor uh, the legislative committee that to make sure that everybody will be able to uh, to be heard and we balance out with women and men and uh, the leaders who lead the meeting so everybody has to be um, uh, be able to be heard and balance out even though we may not be able to speak English, but. Uh, uh, having to sit there and listen to all the conversation and um, understand um, each position and how that will affect and how that will change and uh, our church now in the future. I'm very hopeful for United Methodist Church and I know that uh, we kind of remove some of those powerful languages that have been in our book of discipline and open the doors and allow those that they are called by God, and of course they go through the process to be ordained. But even all of this that passed, it will come back to us as a congregation uh, to make the decision if we want to officiate a wedding here, if, I, um, if we wanted to uh, have a, a LGBT pastor. So all that will come back to the own discernment of the congregation, of the church and the pastor, but being able to open up that door and allow all people that we are valued, we are all God's people, we are loved by God, and we are called by God to serve. So that is just a little part of the conference, but thank you for all your prayers. And uh, we ended up with uh, the, the president of the Council of Bishops, which is an African-American woman for the first time because the person retired of the Council of Bishops and the new president, uh, Reverend Dr. Tracy Malone from the uh, Ohio Conference. She concluded the, the conference with a great sermon uh, telling us that um, to go and make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world and that is who we are. We are called to serve the Lord with all that we receive and all that we have and all we got praise to God for his glory. So that is a little um, uh, summary of the conference, and there are more, but uh, I think our times and newsletter will be coming up next week, and I will make sure that I included the major change and things that they have been uh, uh, talked about at the, at, at the general conference. But uh, it's all good, and we'll continue to pray for our church. Uh, any other sharing that uh, you want to share? That's pretty much a long summary of our general conference. Um, here is, you may wonder what is this, our Tongue and Ministry service later today with our, it's called the Sunday School uh, Day on White Sunday. The service will be led by the children. They will be having a great song, a singing, a memory verse. But let us 
working together, um, setting with the passing of Mercy's mom, but let us come knowing that the Lord is with us, and may God bless us with his peace, comfort, and strength. For those who are not here, we'll continue to lift them up in our prayers. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Hear our prayers. And once again, on this first Sunday of May, we're looking forward to join together to worship, to praise the holy name, to give thanks to you, O oh God, for many blessings for our family, for this congregation, for our children, the music that we sing, the prayers, and the sharing. But we know we are sinners. We fall short at all times. We ask for your forgiveness, and we pray, O oh Lord, to your Son, Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and his life. Through him, the shedding the blood on the cross for forgiveness of our sins. And that is our faith and that is our hope that we place in your son that we come and pray to you. You promise, O oh Lord, when two or three gather together in your name, you will bless us. We feel the spirit in our midst. We see the smiles of faces as we wave and share the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. This morning, O oh Lord, we lift up mercy and the family. For the passing of Lou Barada, a faithful member of our congregation, now we truly miss her, but we know, O oh God, that you, she's in your presence, in your loved arms. We pray for peace, comfort, and may all the planning and organizing to bring her here to the family as we together celebrate. Hear our prayers, O oh Lord, for those who are struggling with illnesses, health issues. Many of us sitting here concerned about our loved one, going through a difficult time. Hear our prayers, O oh Lord. We lift them up to you, for you promise that when we call upon your name, your mighty hand will touch them, will heal, comfort. O oh Lord, we pray for the world. We have seen the light everywhere. We see the wars continue. People are dying. People are suffering. You created us to be loved, O oh Lord, as we hear from the gospel lessons this morning. But we are to remain in you because your Father loved your Son Jesus, and Jesus loved us. As we, in during this season of Easter, remind us of that love that nothing will separate us from the love of God. And do not lose faith, but hold on to that, you, O oh God, your uh, faithful trust in you. That you bring peace to this world. And for those who cry and moan their suffering and hurting, be present, O oh Lord. Be with them in such a time as this. May your healing hands upon those of God willing to hold we conclude with our journal conference and all of us returning home to be with our church, continue to discern your will as you call us to continue to serve you, not only within our four walls, but throughout our community and throughout the world. We need you, God, that no matter what's happening and what we do, we need to take some time and be still and know Hear our prayers, and there are so many unheard prayers that we may not remember. But we come to you, surrender our lives to you, and allow you to come and dwell in us as we remain in your love. And together we pray the Lord's <coughs> Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our day. Deliver us 
children, the Gospel of John, uh, continue to talk about uh, the message or the time that Jesus was with his disciples before he was crucified. In John chapter 15, the verse, the first of eight verses talked about when Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branch. And when it comes to our reading this morning, there are three things that the uh, Jesus talks about as the essence of God's love and how we are so sent by God as God loves his son and his son loves us. And you see that relationship between God and his son and his son um, loves all of us as we have that connection with God through his son Jesus Christ. And we all know about that relationship of how God loves us Without reading this morning, it started off by, by saying, because my father loves me and I love you, so remain in that love. First, in verse 9 and 10, it, what comes to us that, that abiding in God's love. Jesus begins by inviting us to abide in that love. What does that mean? To remain in that love. Just as Jesus abides in the love of his Father. And this deep relationship will create that love that no one will separate them, as Paul talks about in chapter 8, Romans chapter 8. The key here is abiding in his love. How can we abide in this love is by trusting the person that loved us. Just like as a father loves his son, or parents, as we all experience, how parents love their children, regardless of how disobedient their children are, or nothing will take that love that you have for your child. Nothing will break that love that you have for your children. And that's what Jesus is inviting us in the beginning of our reading. And God's love is forever and everlasting. And when God loves his son, he show as he said to die on the cross for our hope. God created us in Genesis chapter 1, not just to create us to show his mighty power, but God created you and I to be loved by God. And what happened in Genesis chapter 2 and chapter 3, that because our first parents wanted to be like God, they disobeyed God. But the invitation for us this morning is that we must abide in God's love because it's real and it's true. 
true. It's agape love. It's a selfless love. It's a sacrificial love that God has for his own being because he created us in his image. If we read the creation story, very interesting that God created this world out of nothing, out of chaos, out of darkness. And then he separated the sky and the land and had the ocean and then filled the land with trees and plants and animals and all the living things and filled the ocean with the fishes, all types of fishes and the birds in the air. And then on the sixth day, he created us. And why is that he created us? He could have been just done with the trees and the plants and the birds and the fishes that make this earth beautiful. But God created human beings out of dust and breathed into his Holy Spirit to give us life. And that is our soul, our spirit becomes to allow us to be loved because he loved us. And that is the difference between us and all the living things here on earth. So truly what John is saying here, what Jesus is saying here in John chapter 15, that as my father loved me, I loved you. So remain in that love. As I share with our children, there are times that we feel that we're not loved. Jesus reminds us in our reading that God loves and we are loved. I know growing up it, it, it was tough because um, there are times that you feel you're not loved when you're out there in school with friends and uh, you'd be have your friends and the next day they turn away from you and, and, and you lonely and you feel unloved and there are times that they we go through as youth as young person you struggle through life and there are times that you you feel that you're uh, you're lonely there's no one love you nobody wants to be with you but this morning the invitation to all of us to remember love because that is the nature of God. We created out of God's love and Jesus assure us in his teaching that is our purpose and that is our worth that we are loved by God. And no wonder that Jesus said when he put together all the commandments when was asked what is the greatest commandment because there are so many in the Old Testament. And Jesus said, love God with all your heart, your mind, your strength, and love your neighbors as you love yourself. With all the commandments that we have, if you just focus on God first, love him with your everything. And with that love that God created you, you love not others. In the journal conference that I attended, and as I come to the conclusion, as we removed all those hurtful language in our book of disciplines, it allowed us to open the door and allow everybody to come and be part of the body of Christ in the, as a part of making disciples for the transformation of the world and let God call who God wants to call. We're just open the door. Before we close the door, it's only for those who we know or we feel that are right to be served or to be called into ministry. But here Jesus illustrated to us the deep, the width, the height of God's love through the ultimate act of sacrifice by laying down his life for his friends. His sacrificial love knows no bound, reaching even to the point of death. Exemplifying the selfless, selflessness and the depth of God's love for us. Therefore, 
Jesus said, you are a chosen. You are chosen by God. You do not chose God, but God chose you from the beginning. Jesus declared that we are not a servant. You notice that Jesus changed his language in verse 14 to 17. No longer call his disciples. This conversation was taking care in the upper room. And Jesus no longer is calling them as my disciples, as my followers. But three times, Jesus referred to his disciples that you are my friends. You are no longer my servants, but my friends. And when he said that you are my friends, there is a, a deep connection. There is a closer relationship here between Jesus and his disciples and for those who trust Thank you. 
great thanksgiving. with your people on earth and all the company of heaven. We praise the name
put love into human form in Jesus, who lived, died, and was raised to eternal life. Receive now this offering that your grace may live today through the work of your church. Allow us to be bathed in your love, not only offer this gift, but our lives as your chosen one. And may this gift enable our congregation to bear fruit for eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. For our closing hymn, the love divine or excelling, United Methodist Hymna, 384, verses 1, 2, and 4. Join us in the fellowship hall.